You guys can go. Well, we're going live. We never know when we're live. Uh, we got to try to figure that out. We figured out how to shut off the video, but we never figured out how to start it. So, um, how's everybody doing? Good? Yep. Yeah. Or, or I should say, how is everybody doing? Well, right? That's right. That's the right answer. So, yeah. What's it looking like, Nicole? Are we up and running? Well, good morning to you and to all those that are on uh, live this morning. And so we're just going to trust the Lord. Uh, let me tell you a little story. It's funny, I was talking to Patrick last night. And um, I asked Patrick uh, uh, what guided Israel. I think he would have said it maybe, what guided Israel in the wilderness. And he said it was a cloud by day. And fire by night. And I asked them uh, practically what that meant and what it looked like. And uh, he wanted me to answer that. And I said, like, you, you, if you could think about you're out in the desert, okay, with no shade. And imagine if God would put a cloud over you by day to protect you from the heat of the sun, maybe. Right? In a practical sense, the presence of God would have guided them. Now, now let's go to the night. In the night in the desert, it would have really cooled down at night. Isn't it? Don't you find it interesting that he did it by fire at night? And fire keeps us warm. Right? And so so I, I don't know like how we came into the room today. But I know that... Uh, like. I, God is into like clouds and fire and rain and wind and all the different things. God would, if we would press into his presence today and we need guidance, then he's going to put what we need in our life to guide us through whatever we're going through. And you say, well, Roger, uh, it hasn't been going real good for me in the sense of I've been doing a bit of complaining. Let me tell you about Israel. If you've been complaining, so God fed them when they were in the wilderness. Every day, manna would drop in Bethlehem. Didn't even need a refrigerator. Right? And matter of fact, on like he didn't do it on the Sabbath, so they got two lots the day before the Sabbath. So they had enough food every day. It would show up. Matter of fact, it would drop down. Imagine, Sue, you didn't have to bake or cook or anything like that. Every day. And do you know that they found a reason to complain? But then God still loved them. Guys, I think we, I think sometimes, and, and I'm not giving you permission to complain, but I'm saying sometimes we think we've moved away from God because we've got some kind of attitude. Man, I think God is close to us and loves us and he wants to guide us through whatever. I'm telling you, like, I'm, yeah, I know for sure. Like, Egypt was bad. They were in slavery, like making bricks for them and stuff like that. The wilderness wouldn't have been much better, so you know that. Like, you think out in the desert, right? Like, like that, with the sun, you know, and for 40 years, because nobody could go in, only Joshua and Aaron into the promised land. Everybody else had to die because of the disobedience and everything like that. But still, God is our guide. So we're going to do some praise. I would encourage you today, and those that are online today, I would encourage you to press in to the presence of God. Now let's say you're going through something. I'm telling you today, it might be a cloud. It might be fire. But the thing that would help to get you through what you're going through, that's what God will show up with. And he'll lead you and guide you through. So Father, we ask you just to be with us today. We worship you and honor you and exalt you today. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. I'll ask you guys to stand with us this morning. We are... Uh... We're excited to be here. We uh, we started playing the first service, and uh, we had um, 
we learned three songs in 15 minutes, and uh, <laughs> that is just how our lives are going right now. <laughs> We're just, yeah. uh, as of last night, something pulled me away. I wasn't even playing this morning, and then something happened, so I could. So I put Jake on standby, can you play? And then I said, no, nope, we don't need to play anymore, so we're all over the place. But we, uh, we want to sing a few uh, new songs this morning to honor God. The first song, um, if you don't know John 3.16, then you don't need to sing this. But uh, hopefully you all know that song, or that verse. So, um, we just want to encourage you to sing along and, uh, and worship God this morning with us.
trying to figure out some stuff for those that are online. And uh, I don't know what was going on, but we were picking up uh, some strange noise. But anyway, it could be anywhere. That could be coming from who knows where. But anyway, um, just it, it sounded a little bassy or something, but I don't think Luke, it's, I, I, it was Steve's guitar I had to tweak. And for those that are online, we're just trying to still figure all this stuff out. But anyway, we're glad that you're there, and um, we're glad that you can worship with us. Amen? So let me give you a few announcements, Nicole. I don't know if you want to, I'm just going to put the pictures on there afterwards, and maybe I'll get you to just push them up, uh, the camera up there. And uh, I just got to, let me just say that there's some Bible studies. You're going to see some Bible studies roll up on the screen. And uh, I know that there is a, a joy group going to start. I think it's starting next Monday. There will be a joy group starting. Uh, there is also a, um, there's one also starting Wednesday morning. I know there's a men's group going to meet here on Tuesday night. And there's another men's group. I forgot to ask Sean before he left. And um, then there's a prayer meeting that meets here on Thursdays. And also, I'm going to start that prayer meeting at Cardinal Church for the area. That we continue to pray for the area on the last Sunday night of the month. We'll do a prayer meeting there. And uh, so we're just going to keep, we're just opening. I know that there's a youth uh, discipleship thing going to happen here at um, Sunday nights, I think in starting next Sunday night. And um, so that's coming up. And, and you probably can't see Julie over sitting on the side, but I just heard that you're helping out with that. And uh, so good luck with teenagers. I'm just joking in your life. <laughs> They're great. Teenagers are wonderful. And I really enjoyed mine when they left home. No. <laughs> I had the best kids in the world next to, I won't give the list of people that they were next to. <laughs> but anyway, so, and uh, we're got, we got children's church also. And so we went and got the rest of the videos. And so uh, ask your kids, even after the service, about these videos. And... Um, we went and got them, and, and, and Cardinal Church have split with us, and so we've got some kid stuff going for both churches. And so, uh, anyway, that's exciting. I wanted to say, because I had some questions, and I'll say this also online, usually on a long weekend, we go one service, 10 o'clock. We can't do that anymore. So, so just today, say, uh, like there's, we, we would have administered to about 46 people with an overlap about six or seven people. And so that means it's over our threshold in the sense of what we're allowed. So we are just, every week we will have three services. And then uh, if, if it grows beyond, well, I think we're starting to look a little crowded then we will look at another service then. But until then, we're just going to keep going forward and uh, just trusting God with that. So, uh, But I think that's pretty well all the, the announcements rolled there by now. And uh, let me encourage you, the offering plates are back there. If you're watching us online, you're able to, to uh, email both churches. Nicole, maybe you could throw that up. If you, do you know how to do that? It should be the giving emails. And so we'll... Again. And so anyway, uh, welcome again, I want to say that. And uh, let me encourage you, we're going to go into worship now. And uh, I just want us to press in with the presence of God. I, I, I know uh, it's nice to see Carol walk in a second ago, but Carol would be thinking about her mom right now, and uh, her mother's at emergency. And it's Carol, it's interesting, but we have a lady, Janet, in Cardinal, and her mom, Rose. 
and Rose just got admitted into the hospital uh, a few minutes ago, and uh, but I know her daughter is really struggling. So, so we need to pray for these folk because it's not easy. I mean, you take someone to the hospital, and and it's just it just it's so difficult. And I want us to continue to pray for Coraline. I've been trusting God, speaking life. I just keep speaking life. And uh, you, you know, there's a ton of people that will speak death over us. You know that. I don't know if you've ever been anywhere that someone will speak something over you. And maybe we can learn a little bit about that later. But I just want to continue to speak life, right? And so I'm going to get my wife to come up. And I'm going to ask her to lead us in prayer uh, for those. And I know there's, there's tons of needs. I know there were some moms that we prayed for. Is there a need here right now? Is there, is there something? Okay, so we're good. I know we prayed a lot this morning. But guys, I think there's a lot of people suffering. And we're going to deal with that topic in a little while. But still, we need to pray and ask God to guide people and, 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 and lead people. Um, and so, so we just need to trust. And so, so Denise, would you come close and, and um, would you lead us in prayer? Father, we just want to thank you that even on this Thanksgiving weekend, Father, that we have so much to be thankful for. But God, still our hearts are at times heavy with some things that's happening in our own lives or in our own families, friends of ours, God, and people that we sit next to sometimes in the pew. And so, God, we just want to ask you today to bring that peace that only you can give. So often we look for peace and contentment in different places, but we can't find it inside of you. And so, Father, I just ask you today for each person that was mentioned, Carol's mom, uh, Coralyn, and her family, God, and for Rose and her family, Janet, different ones, God, that are needing a special touch from you this morning. I ask you, Lord, that you would just reach down wherever they are and they would get a sign from you that you have heard their hearts cry today. And Father, I just ask you in the name of Jesus that, that peace would just settle where maybe turmoil or anxiety or anxiousness or anything that would be there, God, I pray it would be re replaced today with peace in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, this morning we just honor you. Lord, it is difficult not to be caught by fear and gripped by anxiety. But Lord, we need to trust you and lean on you and let you lead us and direct us, O oh Lord. We honor you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Steve, I'm going to get you to do that verse again in a second. But this morning, I can actually, like, I, I, I see, like, these... I don't know what I would call it, but just moments that arrive that would cause an individual to, to really struggle and, and be anxious and, and overwhelmness. And, and this morning, like, I don't know how we could, like, cause peace to settle in. Like, for those that are online or anybody in this room, but we're going to ask God's peace. We're going to sing that again, and we're going to ask God's peace just to set. <clears throat> right? It's, it's not the peace that people are talking about, like they make that world peace and all that. I would inform anybody that when they start talking like that, sudden destruction will show up. But what I'm saying is there's a peace that passes all understanding that's able to settle. And, and so I'm not going to ask you this morning just for your physical condition. My question is this morning, I wonder how our soul is doing in these moments. Like, let's dig deep. Let's, let's go into the root. What, how is your soul doing? How is your heart deep within you? What causes you to live and be? Let's ask God to bring peace in these areas. Not that, that maybe the turmoil that's around us, that's probably not going to go away. But what about our lives, our hearts, our souls? God, bring peace. So Steve, just that verse again, I'm no longer. Thank you, Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Hallelujah. I am a child. alive, 
the first person, the last person that's going to be, like that person says this. Like that carries a lot of weight. And I love the next line. I shouldn't be preaching yet. He says, I know. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if some of this stuff is not in my notes, but let me just say that like, if you're here in this room and you're going, like, I, I, Carol, I'm sorry to pick on you, but, like, the Lord knows what your mom, he knows. Right now. We, and Rose, I know, is in hospital. God knows. Right? And when it comes to, like, Coraline, he knows. And so, so, and he cares. But he goes on, I know your tribulation and your poverty. Crazy, but then he says, but you are rich. Right? Interesting thing. And the blaspheming by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And so let me do a little introduction for you first. I mean, the second letter addressed to, what's the name of that again? Smyrna. Smyrna. <laughs> Hard words. Smyrna. I mean, that city, it was large and it was wealthy. Right? It was 35 miles north of Ephesus. And if you were part of last week or you got a chance to look at it, Ephesus now lies in ruins. Right? Like after the 5th century, after the 5th century, it's like they lost their first love, so you know that. And, 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 and there were some promises that came with losing your first love. If they didn't repent, if they didn't return, they would lay in ruins. And they still lay in ruins. A little different, though, for this city, simply because there is a great contrast here. Right? But now, I want us to look at the background, because I think it's amazing how Christ started this. And so, I'm going to say, seven years prior to this letter, the city of Smyrna laid in ruins. And they lay in it for three centuries, which was crazy. Right? So, so they had their struggles. But I, I, I could tell you today that they're still in existence. Matter of fact, 200,000 people live in that city right now. And it is amazing. It is a beautiful city. And the church sort of still exists in a, in a, in a really positive way. But when you get Jesus opening something like this, this is what he says, the first and the last who was dead and has come to life says this. These people could understand that because not only did their city resurrect in the sense that they did lie in ruins, now they're doing very good. The one that's speaking to them, which is Jesus, went through the very same thing because of persecution. Jesus suffered, and so when he makes the statements that he was dead, but now he's alive, the people in that city completely understood, as John was pinning the words, that now we've had our struggles too. We can trust him. But I, I got a feeling for us too that's in this room and those online, we can trust Jesus. Because he's been through. Matter of fact, Ephesians says, uh, sorry, no, I don't have it up there, uh, but Hebrews says that we have an high priest who has been touched by the all that we have been hit by. So we actually can trust Jesus Christ. And it is so powerful. And so Christ is described here as not like he's the first. Like so you know, like Christ is like person zero. Like before Abraham was, Christ said, I am. Jesus said, my father and I are one. 
So long before the Bethlehem birth, Christ existed. And I can tell you this today, that the last guy standing is going to be Jesus Christ. You choose who you want to put your trust in. But that is the truth about Jesus Christ. And so he goes on to say to them, they were persecuted and they're poor. Although they look poor, he, Jesus said, you are rich. But it is interesting that it is God's chosen people who are persecuting them. I find it quite interesting. But let me say, uh, and for, for not just for those that are here today, but anybody that would connect with this from Seaway, so it is true sometimes of other Christian people. Don't we just treat our own sometimes wrongly and bad? And so in this context, the reason that they were suffering was because of the Jews, and Jesus really pushed the, the, the standard and the lines really far, he said, they think they're Jews, but they're not. I, I find that interesting. Like, I don't think I've got nerve enough to say, it. they think they're Christians, but they're not. Like, people that don't display the fruit of the Spirit... When it comes to like kindness and gentleness and mercy and long suffering, they think they're Christians, but they're not. Like, or at least here, Jesus speaking to God's chosen people in the midst. Guys, we ought not to suffer because of each other. We ought to be in support of and encouraging and building up each other, even as we see the day approaching. And I, I see it here. These folks really suffered for the cause of Christ. And all Christ continued to tell them was, listen, be faithful, not fearful. And I think there's a good message there. Last week, and I'm doing it on camera again today. I probably shouldn't. I don't think I did it on camera last week. Let me just throw this out there for you, just in case, just to mess you up a little bit today. What about, what if God caused Corona? Oh, don't let a picture be painted in your mind of an awful God. Break open your Bible and see how much stuff he did for several reasons. You say, Roger, go easy. I never said, I asked the question. And I'm, but I'm telling you that, that our heads cannot even fathom a God. Sometimes I like to preach who God is and what he's really like. I think most Christians, because Christian faith right now is a million miles wide and one inch deep. I'm telling you that we have got a God who have did some crazy things in the past that I can't get my head around when I read my Bible. But he's God and I'm not. And by no means do I believe, let me say that on camera, let me stand straight because I'll be getting challenged with this one. I don't believe that God caused Corona-19. But I do believe he could have. Because he's God. And why would he want people to suffer? Why do Christians have to suffer? Why does this church have to suffer? And is suffering wrong? Let me show you the rights of suffering. What matters a lot if we suffer. And, and, and the problem is that, and in this context, I, I did some research on that 10 days. So, like, these guys were going to be thrown in prison, like, for 10 days. And I thought, well, okay, maybe there's 10 levels of suffering. Maybe there's an avenue that, to get out of it, there's, there's 10 ways or 10 steps that you could get out. And, and none of that, what really was portrayed here in John's writing is, he wants all Christians to know that suffering is temporary. If you are suffering, 
It is temporary. So you know that. It's not going to be. And if you are suffering also, this Bible says today that you will receive the crown of life. There will be a crown put on you for suffering. But why is it that we've got to suffer? Why does Christians suffer? Why do other Christians want to put suffering on other Christians? Like these are good questions. They are. And in this church, let, let me just say, suffering may show up in your life because of discipline. Nicole, maybe you could throw up uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and verses 30 to 32. I'll turn around, sorry, Canada, but for this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. Verse 32, look at it. But when we are judged, we are disciplined. Look, what does it say? By the Lord, so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So sometimes suffering can come in our lives in the form of disciplining us to come back closer to the Lord. And let me say that God will never tempt you. I should say that because now I'm lying. The Lord will never tempt you that you would sin. But He will definitely discipline you because He loves you. He really will. The second thing is, is Pabekov. And, and so let's read uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. This is a good one. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself. Imagine, this is the Apostle Paul. So to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. And so, so the thorn was given to prevent Paul from exalting himself. A third reason, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, and this verse is about Jesus, you and I need to learn obedience. I want you to see, although he was a son, talking about Jesus, it goes on to say, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Like that's harsh, isn't it? It's hard. And sometimes, I mean, come on, if I did a survey here now, how many would say in this room, I never want to suffer, right? That's the reality. But the real thing is we do suffer. And we've got to bring a Christian biblical context to whatever we go through. I mean, it provides a testimony. Acts 9 and 16, it provides a testimony so we can share. Listen, I suffer. I can remember many times, guys, Denise, so when I leave this second service, there are times that I get so discouraged. I used to call it depression, and, and when I did some research on it and some reading on it, I'm like seeing some folk that are depressed, it would not be fair for me to say it's depression. It really wouldn't. I get defeated. Sometimes from right here at the church to when I get the cardinal, Denise has got to encourage me. she got to speak into my life. Some days, uh, you, you won't see us apart a lot. Simply because the devil can wreak havoc on our lives. But let me say, other Christians always attempt. Maybe not other Christians. They say that they're Christians. But Jesus was brave enough and bold enough to say that they're of the sin of God, of Satan. Harsh words. But, but I look at this, and listen, we suffer. And we suffer much. And Jesus don't want us to be fearful. I want to give you another verse. I, I like this verse. right? Hebrews 12, verse 11. I, I'll read it. It's long. All discipline. All discipline. For the moment seems not to be joyful. How many would say that? All suffering for the moment does not seem to be joyful. We could all say that. But sorrowful. Right? It does, but look what it goes on to say. Yet, to those who have been trained by it. So, so, so you know, when I make the statement, 
that what if God caused Corona 19? In my mind, I don't, I don't make loose statements. I don't. It's not just to, just to be able to say something. Some of the reason that I would say that is, and I, 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 the reason that I would say that God is not causing it, because I don't see the church reacting in a good way toward God. You say, Roger, I'm telling you that if there was a discipline that was placed upon the Christian church, it should be placed upon it to train us. To train us to trust the Lord even more. Because afterward, it yields the peaceful. Listen to me. It yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And I'm telling you that most Christians that I run into these days, there's not that peaceful fruit of righteousness. And we need it, guys. We, this church suffered under the end of, of, of people. But the reality is, if we suffer, we need to trust God because it will train us and develop us to do. I, I want to I finish with the last verse before Jake comes back because I think it's, it's really powerful. Nicole, I'll probably pick it up the last part. Verse 11, E overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. I want to encourage you. Let's say, guys, I, I wish I was, uh, like, I, I wish I would have probably did, I don't know if the right terminology is psychology in the sense of maybe understanding us better as, as humans. I don't know if that's the right terminology to, 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 to study man and our condition, but I, I wish I would have did, or, or maybe more counseling courses to understand what people go through and why. I, I see sometimes reactions, I see uh, things come out of people's lives sometimes that, that they're unpleasurable to the eyes, but, but you never know what a person is going through, right? I, and, and what they've been and all that stuff. But, but I want us to see if we overcome. Because I think, I think it's important that we overcome. So, so let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Because I think it's, it's difficult for us to think, okay, now I've got to make some choices so I can overcome. Now, Jesus knows where you are, guys. Come on. Jesus knows. And he conquered what? Death and the grave. And he lives. And so, and he did it for them. And he wanted them to know that he was going to get them through. Right? Remember how I started? The cloud guided Israel by day. What? It was shade from the sun, probably. I don't know that. Nothing in the Bible says that. But practically, I just got a feeling that they weren't burning up and dehydrated. There was fire by night. It may have just kept them warm. It's only the marriage opinion. But the reality is, I know that God wants to guide us. I know He wants to lead us. I know that He wants to be there. I know that He said He would never forsake us. He'd never leave us. He'd bring us all the way. We're going to get across the finish line. We're going to be there. And if we overcome, it says we will not be hurt by the second day. And you say, Roger, what does that mean? And what did these people understand? Because so you know, some of these people died for their faith. They suffered to the point of death for their faith. And there's people in the world, maybe not in the Canadian culture, but there's people in the world suffering for their faith. What does it mean not to be hurt by the second death? Let me tell you what's going to happen. I wasn't sure I would do this on live video. But why not? So when all this is said and done, when the last guy is standing, when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord, the scripture says that hell and all the dead in it, all the demons that Jesus would have cast out, you know, remember, remember the pigs one time when, when they went squealing and jumped off and, and, and it says that all the demons went to the abyss? Well, all the demons and the devil and, and everything that was against God, it says there's coming a day that the second death, that the final stage, that is going to be picked up 
up and said, I don't know who's going to pick it up inside of Jesus. I don't know who can inside of him. But it says that's going to be picked up and placed in the lake of fire. Where there will be everlasting torment, gnashing of teeth, most of all, more than the torment of human value in the sense of pain, individuals will be separated from God for all eternity. And what this church was promised, if you overcome your suffering, the second death will not touch you. What a promise. What a promise. See, it started with the conqueror. Can I just say that in the last church we learned that Jesus did not only own the keys of death, but he owned the keys to the place of death? And, and, and don't think it cruel for God to pick up all the dead, all the demons and the devil and all the darkness and everything that separated and the corruption and the depravity of men. Don't think Jesus mean to do that. He gave us ample opportunity to walk faithful, not fearful. He gave us ample opportunity to be overcomers. He really has. And so I would push you today. I would challenge you today to trust the one who knows. Trust the one who knows. And guys, I don't want to take away from our suffering. I don't want to take away from our pain. I, I just, I see mental struggles right now, like it's unreal. Sometimes my spirit is just so troubled knowing what is going on. And I haven't even talked to that person, but knowing what's going on in people's lives. But we, we need to trust Jesus to lead us to an overcoming state. I probably should say this. Jake, you, get, you come on up, Luke. I want to say this in closing. There is not one ounce of debt in my heart that Jesus is going to get us through. One ounce. Somehow, somehow, guys, I, I can't promise like you're going to be protected. You know what I mean? Like, like, like some of these people died in their suffering, right? But I can't promise, even unto death, Jesus will be with us. Would you stand? Maybe today you're suffering. Maybe you're online and you're suffering. And, and you know, you, guys, I don't know, but there seems to me a lot of people suffer in silence. <laughs> Nobody ever knows. And guys, we should, we're the church, right? You, you take today, can I say this? What if that was your brother or your sister? And you knew. Guys, I'm telling you, we'd run a hundred miles, wouldn't we? But I'm telling you today that we need to be there for one another. Because we got some people. I'm going to say at Seaway and at Cardinal. I get the chance to speak to them. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's not a lot of people follow us online. I, I don't know. But still, whoever follows online too, listen. May our final prayer and our song be an encouragement to you today. You don't need to suffer. You need to trust God. And your suffering, like 10 days, that I don't know, I, I can't promise you 10 days. What I can promise you, according to that text right there, it's temporary. It's temporary. And so you just need to trust God. Amen? Jake, see that last song.
what I'd like for us to do today. So we're going to make it sort of twofold. Not for the room, but for the room and then online. And so if you're in the room, you're not going to be asked how you suffer. But if you if you suffer, I would like for you just to slip up your hand and just ask for prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to tell you, for those that are in the room that just put up your hand, I'm going to mark my sheet afterwards. I'm just going to put a little dot here. And I'm going to pray for you. Now, if you're online and you suffer, you're watching this video, or later you watch it, and you're struggling. I don't know, I don't know if there's an icon that you can slip up your hand, but I'll have somebody. I've went off Facebook and Instagram and Twitter for a while. No reason. Just too many voices in my head, honestly, and, and uh, just 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 wanting to. Just, just wanting to clear some thoughts and, and all that stuff and uh, you don't have a time frame of how long and, but I do have some folk like they look after the, the stuff and, and I'll make sure but if you're if you're on if you're on one of the social media platforms and, and you you want to put a hand up or you want to just make a note pray for me listen put it in the comments below nobody's going to ask you or anything like that but I, I'm telling you I can I can promise you this for sure, that every name that I write down and I get sent to me in the next day or so, I will pray for you. Right? That, that God will lead you into being that overcomer. Because some folk have suffered a long time, guys. I'm telling you. Right? And I would like to say that medication won't fix it and sometimes it helps people so i'm not that kind of a person but i can tell you this more than any prescription drug prayer works it does spending time with god works trying to get some of the thought guys i'm telling you what i found myself doing it and it's up to you like I, I thought i was solid in my faith i think i'm a solid christian i do but i'm telling you the more i allowed the world to come in with all the avenues that it was coming in with i am sorry but it was messy with me it was and there's only one voice that I want to hear and hear it clear. It's the voice of God. Because I know that he will lead me on. And I want to be an example to people that they can say that Roger March have heard from God. And so I'm saying to you today, if you suffer, I know that I'll pray. And I know that there's people in the room and I'm lying that if they see a name come in the comments below or the people that's in the building today, that they will pray. We need to pray for each other. We do. Jake, could you just do that verse again and then we're going to close in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You are the way maker. He's the way maker. He's the miracle world.
casual Christian. Lord, Satan desires to sift us like wheat. That's strong. That we wrestle not against like flesh and blood each other. Our spiritual warfare is in wicked places. And so there is a force that's against us. And so, Lord, we ought to be not just for you, but for each other. So we lift people up in prayer today. Anybody and everybody's name that will go in the comments. Anybody and everybody that put their hand up in this room, the first service, and maybe even the third service in a few moments. God, we just ask you, God, that you will help us. You know, and you care, and you love, and you lead, and you're first and you're last. So God, help us to trust and be faithful. In Christ's name, and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you, be encouraged today.